Hi, hi everyone. Good night. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to to be here tonight. Uh, and I, I don't have a presentation, although uh, I just wanted to show here uh, some some newspapers. So some of the things that are going on in England, because what, when you when you think about England, you need to see that we are in, already in a pretty bad situation in the UK thanks to uh, the latest governmental decisions of, of Brexit. So imagine an economy that is quite not in the right moment, being hit directly by a major pandemic. One of the things that we need to realize when we talk about the English or like the, the British educational system, but I don't want to say British because Scotland is quite a unique and particular case and they deserve uh, quite, uh, quite a big honor and, and, and how they, they deal with things in general, mostly with open education. It's like we need to think about the UK as one of the most commodified and marketized um, higher education systems. So I'm going to mostly talk about higher education, um, as opposed to like from, from Vanna, that he's a specialist in K-12. I mostly work with, with the higher education system. Um, at, at school level, the schools in the UK are open, but they're closing uh, uh, quite, quite frequently because uh, they, the pandemic is out of control. The government um, is not dealing with, with with it or with the economy or with any other problem quite well. So uh, things a bit are out of control. Uh, now apparently they're closing down the pub finally. After uh, we're going back to same numbers that were like at the beginning of the, of the pandemic. So I, I mean, usually just because I thought it was safer for me to be outside of, of the UK considering the government, the Brexit and the pandemic. And I used to live in central London, so it wasn't the same of, of the places. So what, one of the things that uh, you, you, you need to, to, to think about is how commodify the higher education system. Uh, quite shockingly for, for the Germans uh, in, ger in general, um, the university for a national or so far European uh, student costs around 9,000 pounds a year. That's how much goes for an international. This is for undergrad. This is the only kind of regulated market. So a degree will cost around nine thousand a year, not for an entire degree. Uh, for an international student, the prices are slightly unregulated, so they can be around fifteen twenty-five thousand. Master's degree level, nothing cheaper than twenty-five, quite normally. So we're talking about a very very. Um, capitalist way of dealing with education. So despite of having closing most of the universities last year uh, for well, at least academic year for during the COVID crisis and running and working very, very strongly uh, on, on, on dealing with um, online learning, which is something that I'm really, really proud of my colleagues in the UK. The academics are putting so much effort in making uh, things work and making learning happen. The government keeps saying, oh, we need to go back to get back the universities to work. And people were like, well, we've been working, we've been working nonstop. So the government hasn't been recognizing the effort of academics and, and universities. They're just pretending that people was not working, people was not doing anything, uh, which is really quite unfair. So one of the things that has been happening is like everyone has been working really, really hard and the students have been working really, really hard. And now they decided to reopen the university. The university. Um, it lasted very long, not didn't last very long. Uh, most of the students, in, in a couple of weeks, there were 20,000 students in the student hall uh, uh, in quarantine. So we need to think about how commercialize the market is. Most of the accommodation for students is privately owned or university owned, and it's not cheap. So the students are isolating, uh, sometimes with very, very poor connectivity uh, because it's overloaded and the, the, the student halls do not provide sometimes the best connections. Also, they are not allowed to buy food outside the university managed system. 
So uh, a couple of days ago, I uh, saw so in one of the northern universities, our students were charged 252 pounds every two weeks for four meals, considering the quality of English food. So basically, yogurt, prepared things, and cold sandwiches. Uh, so if, if we think on how it's 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 going on, it, there is a duality. The the, the academics. Uh, warned the government about not going back to face to face. But the government, considering the amount of money they can bring in for tuition fees and actually not losing any students, mostly international students, they say, okay, we're going to open up the campus. Now the campus is like closing down. So loads of teachers are having to deliver some lectures face to face, but they don't have much to do. So then we have to get the things recorded and then or, or redone. Uh, in an online environment. So it's, it's not very easy, the situation. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the, uh, let me see if I can share the screen here. Mm, not sure, I guess, screen share. Let me show you uh, the stuff one. I think it's, uh, I have blocked myself for sharing screen, I think, in the last time with I the top block, so I can't. <laughs> so I just want to show you a bit, like on, on, on the Guardian, the one, I'm gonna put it on the chat, I think it's easier. Uh, the, the, the academics are complaining that nobody's listening to them. So, here. Uh, the academics and, and the student unions and, and also the, the, the unions of teachers, um, so, are, are telling the government, we cannot open the campus. It's not safe for us, it's not safe for the teachers, it's not safe, and it's also not safe for the people that work at the university. Again, this is a very commodified market. Lots of, for example, employee, employees, so the janitors and the people that do the cleaning and the, all the main things are sub-employed. So it's people that don't have any guarantee to work in a safe environment because they are subcontract from a big corporation, they just sending normally migrant and poor foreign uh, cleaners to uh, <laughs> keep the university clean. But these people will not be provided with like proper equipment to do so. So in a way or another, you need to think that you're working with a commodified market in one of the richest countries in the world, but that does not provide free education or free anything to anyone. So one of the issues that like the student, the, the National Student Union showed up and it's quite interesting to see because considering uh, exactly what uh, Vanna was saying, uh, the digital gap, people not being able to afford the internet. If you think about England, you think London, London is thriving, London is cool. London has one of some of the poorest neighborhoods in the entire world. The, there is zones of, of London, they are like so deprived that if someone uh, lives there, uh, it's quite likely that they live in uh, very cramped houses, uh, in very bad conditions, and the connectivity is non-existent or, or uh, very, very limited. Libraries are not open, so students can not go and work in, in the library. The students are living off campus. So the National Student Union uh, ran the survey at the beginning of the year, and they're talking about how digital poverty is uh, leaving students behind. And it's not just about the access of the connectivity to, to have access to a laptop or to have a connection. You need to think that certain areas of, of, of England uh, and, or, and in general of the UK have very impoverished, impoverished and uh, poor background of people that Sometimes they're first generation students, they managed to get into university, but they never have the skills. They went to schools that were in the private areas, in dangerous areas, they never had good computers at school, they never had like access to technology. Now that they're expected to thrive at university, exactly the same as someone coming from top school. So for example, if you think about like the top tier of universities like Bradford Group or Oxbridge, there are students from the private backgrounds that go study into these universities. And these universities expect students from whatever side of the society they come from, so the richest students in the country or the poorest ones, to thrive equally. But there is a digital gap, there is a digital divide. 
we cannot think that students coming from uh, the richest areas of uh, London, uh, let's say Chelsea or higher up, have the same of like this the same uh, how you can say it. Are did, did they have a, a higher advantage compared compared to people that come from like Tower Hamlet? Tower Hamlet is quite deprived. Uh, first generation, second generation uh, migrant families with very, very limited access sometimes to technology uh, that lead very complicated lives. And the university is like, yeah, we're going to go on online. Off you go. Good luck, darling. Hope you survive. And, 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 in a way or another, this digital device will, make, <laughs> will enable a wider division socially. So the people that manage to afford to get to university thanks for scholarship may not thrive, may not be able to succeed and get the grades they need, for example, to maintain their scholarship. Uh, lots of people will have to retire because their parents lost, or will have to drop out of school because their parents lost their job. So they will have to get to work to be able to support their families. Um, if they live in rented accommodation, now they are expecting to pay quite a lot of money to get food delivered and not best, best quality food, like quite bad uh, for delivered to the, uh, the, the student school. So in a way or another, uh, the situation is complicated not only because of the delivery of uh, teaching, it's because the social gap, the social divide and the technological divide is so high in the UK that lots of students that finally had able to, to change the course of their lives will have to drop out from school, from university, because they won't be able to afford the excessive uh, amount of space, so 9,000 pounds a year. Uh, they will have to get loans, uh, or if sometimes they don't even manage to get loans because they, they don't get them, uh, they will lose their scholarships. And if they get a loan, uh, an average debt for students to get loans is £81,000. That's an average debt. So students from poor backgrounds, they have to ask for loans, come with such a huge disadvantage at social level uh, because they will have to repay a huge debt that people they have to come from like higher end of, 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 of the higher end of the society what have to deal with because they paid it the university. So if, if we think about how unfair and how explicit it's making uh, the situation, this, this, uh, this crisis, crisis, putting in evidence something that we lecturers, we researchers that work in the UK for a very long time, I've been saying the digital gap is high. The students are, uh, uh, are are running in a very disadvantaged way. There is way too much uh, privilege in, 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 in like privilege gap around the UK. They weren't listening. Now it's going to be a large group of people that are brilliant. They uh, fight. That they really fight, have kind of worked hard for the opportunity to get there. Um, uh, they're going to lose their place because they're going to lose their scholarship. Um, I, I don't know. This is this is a it's, it's a bit of a sad situation. However, of course, uh, and, and hats off to to my colleagues and all the uh, people in the UK that's been doing quite a lot of hard hard work um, and opening up learning. One one of the things that, for example, the Association of Learning Technologies were kind of the main drivers of kind of technological change and technological development in the UK at, um, at kind of age level. This is a sort of an organization that could be understood as a sort of a way of a civil society. Uh, they kind of manage and they support the development of learning technologies and learning technologies in the, in, in the UK. And, and, and they uh, have been kind of fostering close with the work of Helen, Helen Giddham this uh, open COVID pledge for open education in which they are requesting the universities to open up the things that the, the, students, the teachers are producing. We're, think, we're 
talking about that like the top universities, like according to, of course, very critically for me, their own rankings in UK and the US make the rankings for always to win. So, uh, but we think about Oxford and Cambridge and UCL and uh, Kings and Kings and Imperial, like the knowledge that they are producing, yeah, uh, so far, the knowledge they're producing, to put it up open. One of the things, for example, the UCL has been doing, UCL and Leo Haberman and Joe Stroud, been leading in, 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 in this project, uh, they uh, created a course for electorates on how to use teaching and learning technologies for uh, academics, so how to kind of enhance their games, and they made it up open access. So open, they made it uh, as an OER. And, and I think universities slowly, 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 slowly are taking up on board the importance of opening up the things they're producing, the, the knowledge they're producing, not only just as open access, which is quite thriving in, in the UK. Uh, there are uh, kind of lots of mandates to support open access. Now, finally, uh, apart from the incredible work that uh, University of Edinburgh and, and it's been doing uh, with the work of Melissa and, and Lorna, are it's kind of pioneering in, in, in the country. Uh, now they see the importance of having that, for example, start developing open policies, so open education policies, which is, I think, the next step. But at least with the open pledge, it's kind of clear that the universities and the teachers themselves need to start opening up their content to let others uh, take advantage of the things that they're producing. 